Hello and welcome to Retro Gaming Suite. Today I'll take a look at one of the more collectible NES games from one of the best development studios in the world ever, Capcom. The fourth release in the Disney Afternoon Cartoon NES series, it is of course the terror that flaps in the night, the scourge that pecks at your nightmares, the bubblegum that sticks in your hair. Darkwing Duck. So let's get dangerous! The game starts out with a nice opening, something that wasn't that common on the NES. The Darkwing Duck theme sounds really nice through the NES and the intro actually looks awesome! After pressing start you get a quick briefing by Jay Gander Hooter and once you start you see a map of St. Canard with three levels to choose from. Once you select one you get the choice to enter the level or leave to select another. This is the only time you see launchpad during the game by the way. When you enter the stage you'll soon notice that it's highly inspired by the Mega Man games. It's even rumored that it's made of a modified version of the Mega Man game engine. You'll also notice that it looks awesome for a NES game. It's really pretty, it's also really hard. But if you push on through the levels you can probably get through it. It relies heavily on muscle memory and you remembering where the enemies are and what they do. In the order I played, the first stage was the bridge stage. The enemies are not what you should be worried about, it's these. Yeah, you're supposed to jump over to these and hang from them. And just one millimeter wrong will make you fall to your death. This will probably happen over and over and over and over until you luck out and get past it. There are places like these in the other levels too, but nowhere near as infuriatingly hard. It really made me want to scream my throat out until I remember that my girlfriend was in the room doing internet classes. Yeah, that would have been fun, right? The whole class sitting there doing their schoolwork of a Google Meet or something, and suddenly a demented asshole screams at the damn game in the background. Real classy! Anyway, this is probably the easiest stage in the game. Yeah, you'll probably die a couple of dozen times, but now you're hardened. When you finally reach the boss room, you're ready. The boss here is Quacky Jack and some guy that likes bananas. The guy on top will throw banana peels at you and Quacky Jack just tries to avoid you as much as possible. This can get quite annoying, but as long as you stay cool and don't rush, you can beat him quite easily. Between stages, you'll get a quick cutscene with the words well done and Darkwing riding his bike. The second stage I played is the city level. Early on here, you'll find a bonus level. These are scattered across the game and can be found by shooting the air at certain spots. The objective here is to shoot falling eggs that contain different pickups like extra lives, health and ammo for the special weapons. Beware though, because the bonus levels can restart you pretty far back in the levels. Back on the regular stage, you'll encounter some real asshole enemies. The worst being the guys hiding underground shooting fire at you. Those guys are so insanely annoying because you can't see them until they show their head. And mostly that's after you've landed on them. 
Another enemy is the flying guys that shoot projectiles in an arc. These are not nearly as bad because you can at least see them and thus also avoid them. There's also turtles throwing their shells at you and some weird ball ducks with guns. The only danger here are the turtles because they can be really hard to dodge. The ball ducks are pretty easy to shoot. The stage in itself isn't that hard to run through and when you get to the end you encounter the wolf duck. This guy is basically a werewolf style character and shifts between a big wolf form and a weak tiny duck that runs fast. He attacks by throwing boxes at you but they are not that hard to dodge. It's not too hard to beat as long as you know the attack cycle. The third stage is a sewer level. Yeah, how unique! I think Nintendo had a clause in their contract that stated that there must be a sewer level in every other game developers made for the NES. Here you'll encounter knife throwing ducks with capes, lethal duck babies, super annoying ravens, running crocodiles and ball throwing kangaroos. These enemies aren't really super hard but when you encounter several of them at a time it can get pretty stressful. The caped ducks takes a lot of hits to take out but the knives are pretty easy to dodge. So if you just take it slow and methodical you can take them out pretty easy. The running croc also takes some hits but can mostly be avoided. The other enemies are more or less there to make life harder for you by just filling out the screen with more enemies than you can easily handle. The boss is a guy made of water called the liquidator. He hides in the water and when he pops his head above the surface he summons projectiles that can be easily avoided once you learn their pattern. A couple of tries and you should be able to handle him. After clearing the third stage you get three new levels to choose from. I chose the warehouse. This stage starts off super easy but as soon as you get inside the difficulty really ramps up. Down here you'll encounter genies who shoot some slow moving projectile that's really hard to avoid unless you slowly move to the right and take them out one by one. Just remember to shoot the lamp and not the genie. Once you've passed the genies you'll encounter some jump kicking squirrels that you should shoot as fast as humanly possible and some ducks on a flying carpet shooting some magic at you. These only take one hit so can be taken out pretty easy. The end boss is Megavolt. A rat with the ability to shoot lightning. He's pretty easy to beat once you learn to dodge his attacks. The next stage I chose was the tower. The first enemies here are some super annoying basketball throwing assholes that takes forever to kill. Yeah, sports suck. If adults wanted you to sport, then don't make the sporty guys evil in every damn movie or game you put out in the 80s and 90s. Anyway, except for a mechanical dog, that's basically it for new enemies on this level. The ball ducks make a brief appearance here together with the fucking turtles. Oh man the turtles. On this level they are basically just speed bumps. This is the first level where you actually need the special weapons. Specifically the thunder gun that shoots in two diagonal directions. All you need to do to take out these bastards is to hang beneath them and shoot. Just make sure you are close enough to trigger the shell attack. The boss here is Moliarty. 
A mole obsessed with fixing his fire spewing machines. Just learn the pattern of the flames and destroy one of the machines and he'll come running to fix it. Shoot him while he's standing still and he'll be defeated before you know it. Now we have the forest level left for this cycle of levels. Now this is some hard ass bullshit. The first enemy is a suicide bomber flower. Yeah, never thought I'd say those words in the same sentence. These are super hard to dodge and fires really fast, but once you know the angles they fly, you're safe. The next ones are dogs that outgrew their doghouse. These are super fast and can take a few hits before going down, so try to avoid them instead of fighting them. Then we have the birds. These are only placed where you jump and hang on the vines which make them super annoying to fight. Because it's really easy to fall off when trying to avoid them, but as long as you advance slow and steady, you will get past them and finally get to the boss room. Here you'll encounter Bushroot, the easiest boss in the game. He just jumps up and down using the trees to throw apples at you. Once you learn where the apples go, he's easy as pie. So now we just have one level left. The Floating Fortress of Foul. The criminal organization you've been trying to track down all through the game. It's basically a cruise ship littered with enemies. We have the cannon firing assholes that take forever to beat, the green bouncing slimes, a return of the caped knife throwing guys, and two types of knights. One duck knight that you can only shoot in the back and a mouse knight you can only hurt by shooting in the head. This stage also has the most annoying passage in the game. You need to pull a lever to get a platform to show up. Then you need to be lightning fast to get up on it and jump further. If you fail, one of the mouse knights will spawn and most likely kill you. I did this little passage probably 15 to 20 times before I got past it. That wouldn't be so bad if you didn't respawn at the start of the level every time you die. That's a pretty good while back, so just to get past this tiny part of the level took me ages. Once you're past this duck slaughter pit, you get to the second part of the level. Here you'll encounter huge flying ducks, barrel throwing American football dogs, again with the sports stuff, and terminated ducks. These are absolute bastards to kill. They take a lot of shots and transform from static shooting enemies to fast moving robots to crazy jumping assholes. <clears throat> then you get to another hanging jump part. This can be almost as annoying as on the first stage. Once you get past it though, you get to the final set of platforms with a bunch of enemies on but beware the terminator duck guarding the boss door. If he hits you, you're dead. When you get past this guy, you finally arrive at the final boss. Steelbeak is a real coward hiding up in his control room sending a couple of shooting robots to fight instead. I really struggled on this guy trying to fight both the robots and getting up to shoot the window with the lights. Until I realized you can just shoot the robots once, then jump up to the left candle holder and jump and shoot towards Steelbeak and take out the robots as they respawn. Once I did that, it was really easy. Once you've destroyed the control room, he goes down on the floor. Running super fast and back and forth until he stops and picks up a sheet of steel. Shoot him in the back and avoid the throw and you're set. Once he's beaten, you'll get to see a nice little cutscene and the end. So, what do I think about this game? Sure, it has some really annoying things, but it makes up for it in playability. 
The game is really fun and I have no doubt in my mind that I will pick up and play this again down the road. It looks great, sounds great and plays great. So if you can find this at an affordable price, go for it. So that's all for today guys. If you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe to see more. See ya!